going to demonstrate the um, bologna back slab and this um, plaster is put on for fractures of the distal tibia and fibula, uh, lateral malleoli and also the fifth metatarsal fractures and tarsal bones. So that's the reason why I put this particular plaster on. So it's important to make sure that you, the practitioner, is as comfortable as your patient. So one thing we're going to do is raise the bed of the chair that Max is sitting on to an appropriate level. So I want to make sure the chair is an appropriate height, that your patient hasn't got vertigo. You're all right, I'm fine. <laughs> Going up as well. Um, for yourself and, of course, your colleague. Now, this is a two-man operation um, plaster to put on because we need to ensure that the, plaster's at the, the foot is in the optimal position, which is a 90-degree angle at the ankle. So you need someone to actually help you with that and also help you put the plaster on. There are different type of ways of doing this, but we teach it so that we put the stirrup on in two um, bits because it makes life a lot easier from that perspective. So we're just going to raise the chair up. Hmm, like that. Is that an appropriate height for you, Sue? That's fine for me, yeah. Lovely. I'm just going to put a little vomit bowl underneath the uh, patient's leg at the thigh there, because that just helps the leg be raised up a little bit higher while we're actually doing the measuring and actually putting the plaster on. So the ingredients for this would be a large paddy, a 20 centimetre slab, because that's always used a 20 centimetre for the back slab itself, and we've got two 15s here for actually doing the stirrups, um, the pieces either side of the actual leg. Depending on the size of the patient, you may need to use all the 20s, and of course, if you're plastering a child, you go for downsizing the plaster, size of the plasters. And we've got our large bandages to actually anchor it to. And of course, the salona, because we've got two lovely malleolus bones there, malleolus bones that need to be protected to make sure we don't cause them any problems. And our water that is lukewarm, so we don't cause our patients any problems, and it will set nicely for us. The landmarks are the metatarsal, metatarsal phalangeal heads here at the toes. And one thing you need to be careful of is to ensure that when the plaster's on, the little toe is not hiding. We need to be able to see it. The foot needs to be at an optimal angle, so that's 90 degrees. And as I say, that's where Sue comes in because she will make sure that the foot's in the correct position. And the other landmark is the tibial tuberosity, or two fingers below the um, crease of the knee there. Tibial tuberosity is a nice one to look for. The reason we need to think about that is because there's a nerve that comes down the edge of the, the outside of the leg and if we go too high we'll compress the nerve and then even a couple of days later the patient will have foot drop and that will affect them so we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to ask Sue to hold the foot for us. Now the person doing the holding for you is key because the last thing we want is for people to put finger marks and dents into this plaster because whatever is on the outside is replicated on the inside and will cause your patient to have a sore. So one of the good places to hold a foot when you're actually putting the plaster on is by the toes. And then something else we always recommend is have, put the patient's foot up against your tummy because then you can hold a nice optimal position there and you still can help your colleague put um, the plaster on as well. So we're going to measure for the um, stirrups in the back slot then. So the 20 centimetre, so as I say, we're going to go from much to the heads there, around the back of the leg, up to about two, centi uh, two fingers below the, the crease of the knee there. Go a little bit high in case it shrinks. That is about 60 centimetres. Okay, so that's my back slab. Now, some people were taught to put the stirrup on in one piece, going one from one side of the um, leg all under the ankle and then up the other side of the leg. That can be quite difficult to try and get that to actually stick to the plaster, uh, to the actual um, padding whilst we're doing it. So, we have now actually start to teach people to put it on in two halves. Both the correct way, um, it just makes life a wee bit easier doing it this way. So, I want to go to just the middle of the foot there. 7 centimetres. I'm going to have a 15 centimetre cap. And we need two of these. So I'm not going to worry about remeasuring that. <coughs> I'm just getting that for 7 centimetre. Right. So there I've got my, cast, my, my plaster all nicely folded there, ready to go, 
and I've got the two stirrups on the top of my uh, back slab so I can just pick them up and I'm all prepared to actually go ahead and get the plaster. So having made sure that Max has got plenty of analgesia on board and if she needs the end to knock she can have that as well. We're now going to put the padding on to the leg. So we'll start around the feet here. So we want it nice and high, the padding, so that we can actually get a good turn back. Although we remember that um, the metatarsal heads are the um, landmark for this plaster. So again, a nice 50-50 plaster coming up. Be careful that we took everything in nicely and we've not got any flappy bits. Can I I got two of these out, but I don't think I'm going to need two for Mags. So Looks like I'm going to be okay with just the one. And of course, we're going to go that little bit higher around the knee because we need to make sure we've got a nice turn back. Now, Sue did earlier, we must just take the edge of the um, bandage off because that does make it stick a lot better. Just want a little bit more padding on the top there, so I'm just going to go and get a spare bit just to make sure that I've got enough for a good turn back because I don't want Mags to be getting any sores at the back of that knee. Now then, we mentioned about um, the malleoli, so I've got some nice bones sticking out here, so I want to make sure they're nice and protected. one on the lateral malleolus, which is the large of the two bones. I want to make sure they do cover the bone completely. It's no good putting it on as if it's just like a little um, baseball cap. It needs to be a nice rounded hat on it. Just to make sure that they are well protected. So there we go. Ready to go. I'm going to put the first stirrup up because we're going to put the stirrups on first. And I do find it easier to put the medial one on because then I'm not leaning over it when I'm actually trying to get the other one on. So nice and soak it. Again, I'm not taking too much moisture out of it because I do need to make sure it's going to laminate. So going round to the bottom of the foot. We'll put a little turn back on it because that makes it nice and uh, firm edge. And we need to make sure that we've always got about an inch space between the two stirrups because obviously we need to allow room for swelling, which is the reason why we put back slabs on in the first place because this is a new injury. Okay. And also to ensure that is not too high at the top there. Lovely, stirrup number one. So again, we've got stirrup number two coming in. See, so haven't put that one on first. I'm not going to be leaning over this one to get it on. That's just met nicely at the base of the foot. And come up with a nice bit of a turn back, and then mould the plaster against the patient's foot. And your colleague is always making sure that foot's in a nice 90 degree position. If it's not able to do that and get 90 degree position, then it must be documented clearly in the notes that we weren't able to get as the foot has been plastered in the optimum position for whatever reason that may be. Okay, and then last but not least, we're going to put the back slab on. Now the important part, of course, is around the foot and the ankle because that is where the injury is. So I'm going to attend to that first making sure the plaster is coming right up to those metatarsal heads, smoothing it down and coming along and making it adhere to the back slabs. Obviously gravity always plays a, a part in this because it doesn't like playing. And of course, this is where your colleague can come in nice and handy because they can help you out by moulding that plaster to your patient's foot for a nice smooth plaster. Right, a bit of a chunk there, isn't it? Let's trim that off, shall we? Straight 
strange how your plaster goes and shapes mm. itself, isn't it? Guess what am I going to do? Turn, turn back to the down bone. Down now. So we've got those edges nicely laminated together. And also at the toes. And yes, I can see Mag's little toe, it's not hiding. And of course, the bandages which should be pre shrunk will now be opened and put into shrink. Well, it's always good to do that at the beginning of the pasta. And now we're going to just plaster this down to the foot. And I hope my Max isn't too ticklish because Sue's having to grab her toes at the moment. To ensure that we cut, I can bandage it up without putting any dents on the ridges into the plaster. So there we go, and now we're just going to knot the bandage off and we'll put the knot on the outside of the leg because we don't want to annoy the mag so we'll give her a sore on the other side of her leg. And it's not over the fracture site and it's not too tight to cause a dimple in the plaster either. That's a grey knot, never mind. So now that we've finished the plaster, we're going to just ensure that um, the foot is still in the optimal position, which it is. You can see the little toe, make sure that it can um, wiggle. And we've got bits of plaster down there as well, so we need to get rid of them because we don't want them digging into the patient and causing the patient to be, become sore. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Um, and as usual, we're going to tidy our patient up by, especially wiping the toes, because Max probably wants to bend over there now. Just got the plaster on. Do a quick cut refill check while we're doing it. Make sure the circulation's there. Can you wiggle your toes, Max? Does it feel like it's rubbing on your little toe? Yeah. Feel supported? Yes. Good. And of course, this is going to take a little while to, to harden off, so we can't get Max to move just yet, because obviously this is a non-weight bearing cast, so Max will need to be given um, some crutches, but if she's been sucking away on the end, so not she'll need a bit of time to recover from that. So we're going to take the, the well, hats out there and put, it, put some nice blankets, nice soft blankets underneath the leg because otherwise the plaster can flatten and it can cause an indentation into the, into the leg itself, which we don't want to happen. You can just bend your knee as well, Max, to make sure that when you're sitting down, or, that's not, that's fine, that's not digging in, that's lovely. Patients, when they have this plaster, will need to be advised that really this is a non-weight bearing cast. They need to raise it and rest their leg because we need the swelling to go down. Um, so they really should be sitting at home, leg up on a nice stool, quite high, and they should only be moving to go from the chair to the toilet and the chair to, to, to the bed. So that's the reason why I want to make sure we can bend the leg because obviously there's not much space in the girl's cubicle. So we need to make sure that we can do that without digging in. Although really they should be resting it with the leg raised. We were given our patient the usual fracture clinic booklet and we will be offering an appointment in two, two to three days to come back for an assessment in case it will be completed. Um, again we're not going to promise that, just to say it's going to be assessment of the plaster to see if there's anything else the fracture clinic need to do. And we'll be advising the patient about the usual plaster care, i.e. let it dry naturally, that it's going to take 48 to 72 hours to do that. No putting it in front of the fire, even though it's a nice November night because it's going to melt it. No using the hair dryer on it. To keep the leg raised when they're in bed on nice on pillows. And yes, your bed um, clothes are going to be damp in the morning. Not to soak it in the bath or to go and have a shower in it because it's just going to disintegrate and fall off. Um, not to put any weight through it either. Unfortunately, to bear with the actual itching, so there's no um, knitting needles or rulers down there. And again, don't put anything down it either. Okay. Um, because if you get any foreign bodies down there, any coins or beads or anything, you need to come back and have it replaced. Okay. 
Well, I advise Mags about doing certain um, exercises like keeping the toes moving and bending her knee because the last thing we want Mags to have is a DVT, which is a clot in the leg. So we give Mags the clot at the, um, and go through the DVT information sheet because she's got um, a below knee back slab on so she understands what a DVT is and the risks for it and how um, we can reduce the risk of actually developing that. And then of course, Thank you. once she's got over the effect of the entonox and, we can, and the, the plaster's hardened off sufficiently, we can then issue Max with a pair of crutches and ensure that she's safe um, to mobilise before leaving the department. When we do any plasters in the, in the department, uh, we do our notes and we've got these lovely little pink stickers in that we can pop into um, our notes. That can be for any plaster we put on. So we put, and it's always important to say who applied the plaster and who assisted. So in this case, it would be Pam Wood and Sue Thompson that have put the plaster on. If we've given crutches out, which of course in this case we would do, DVT booklet's been given. If we've given the completion uh, appointment to come and the green form, i.e. the referral um, form to fracture clinics are actually in the notes. So the receptionist notes, photocopy the notes, I've got a little sticker on the front so they can go out to the fracture clinic and they'll be expecting the patient in a couple of days' time.